Hello, David Moore, and I've got Robert Smith at Peregrine Private Capital, and uh, we're talking about uh, the possibility of a recession, I guess, a little bit. We're talking about inflation, Mm -hmm. and uh, I'll tell you this, that when we are going into times like we're seeing, the iris side of our business typically increases, and we all hear the ads and see the ads on TV. I mean, it's hard to turn on the TV on a business show these days without seeing something for gold or silver. And we all see the uh, hear the ads on the radio, the same thing. And what are they selling? Tangible assets. And, and uh, I would say the ultimate tangible asset is real property. So if we're going through times like this, and some of the traditional investments, at, at, at the end of the day, I mean, people typically start their investment life in real estate with a house. And maybe that house, they, they get married and they have a kid. Now the house is too small. They turn that house into a rental house. And then that rental house ends up creating the opportunity to go buy another rental house. And then you end up going into plexes and you go into apartments and you end up starting to go into industrial or other things. And then as things start changing in your life, you're tired of all those terrible teas and all those doors, toilets, trash, tenants, turnover. People end up opening up that whole opportunity into the big box, single tenant, triple net investment, which is so wonderful when it works well. But when it goes dark or it's not maybe the leases, the contracts are not maybe up to with those annual escalators, they start falling behind if we start looking at recessionary times. You, you care to make any comments on that phenomenon? Uh, you're exactly right, David. And we've been uh, on our website, in our blogs, we've been warning, uh, we've been cautioning investors with regard to that, making the point that as long as interest rates are going down, okay, Single tenant, triple net lease assets are great because uh, whoever buys the property from you is going to pay more for it. You know, they're going to get less from a cash flow standpoint, so you're well served. But once interest rates start going back the other way, that premium that people have historically paid for an inflation hedge in operating assets, and operating assets are very... Broadly speaking, commercial real estate is bifurcated or divided into two. They're operating assets, those properties with multiple tenants and short lease intervals, apartments, uh, senior living, self-storage, manufactured housing, or excuse me, uh, uh, yeah, manufactured housing. And then there are single tenant triple net lease assets. With operating assets, the value, uh, the, the, ultimately, the property is going to be valued and sold based on the rental income stream. So if you can increase the rental income stream over the lifetime of the investment, there's a strong likelihood that you'll get more equity rather than less when the property is sold. So in that respect, with operating assets, time tends to work in your favor as an investor. With single tenant, triple net lease assets, most of the value is in the lease itself, okay? People are trading off flexibility, the ability to increase rents uh, for the perceived security of a long-term corporate lease. So you, could re- you can realistically make the argument that a single-tenant triple net lease property is never worth more than at the very beginning of that lease term because the more time you burn off on that lease, the more problematic the future sale becomes because the next buyer has to deal with the uncertainty of financing, mm-hmm. retenanting the property, that kind of thing. And so uh, it, in that sense, with triple net lease properties, time works against you. And when inflation hits, like in an inflationary environment like we're in now, it's absolutely critical that you are able to increase your rents with as as much and with as much frequency as possible to keep ahead of the inflationary curve. By way of example, last year nationally, once you get off the left coast and rent control, apartment rents went up on average nationally 14.6%. Mm-hmm. In some of the hotter markets in South Florida, parts of Tennessee, Texas, they went up even more than that. Now that obviously is keeping you ahead 
of the eight, current 8.6% inflation rate. And even year to date, halfway into, uh, half, <laughs> not quite halfway through 2022, rents have gone up about 6%. So that's keeping you ahead of the inflationary curve. And whereas if you have a single tenant triple net lease property with predefined or contractually obligated rent increases, and maybe it's two or three percent a year, you're falling behind the curve. You're losing money. You're not making money. And obviously that's will, there's a very strong probability that that will negatively impact the value of your property when it comes time to sell it. So we think your best inflation hedge is some kind of operating asset where assuming full occupancy, we can increase rents as aggressively as possible. And that elides into what I know is going to be your next question about rent control on the left coast. Uh You know, in Oregon, I believe Oregon is still the only all rent control state And when you as a landlord can't increase rents on an annual basis uh, above the level of inflation, then you're falling behind the curve. So that's another uh, compelling argument for exchanging out of properties here into properties in red states, or at least those states which better respect property rights and don't vilify landlords. Well, last uh, last week I moderated a panel for our CCIM, uh, and it was a development panel with a couple of gentlemen from Turner Construction, which is the largest you know, commercial construction firm in the country. And they do a lot of sports facilities and all, but they're doing a lot of projects around here and, and a lot of in the medical space too. But uh, I sort of asked them, you know, poking the bear a little bit, you know, just talking about rent control. And, and I'm, I'm seeing a fundamental shift in the ownership of real property regionally here uh, because of rent control. And, and if you combine the rent control, the, the, the numbers that they allow you to increase your rents by, and, you know, look at what's happening with inflation, the, the, the property owners can't afford to keep these assets. And then what we're seeing is a shift from you know, regional ownership to institutional ownership. And the regional ownership actually cares about the tenants, cares about the doors, cares about the community, and so much the institutional world doesn't. So I think really we're, we're in, entering into a very interesting period of time and, and all these rent control efforts that our regional politicians have, yeah, they think we're just going to sit here and put up with it? No. I mean, we're seeing a vacuum with, with the mom and pops. They're, they're leaving. They can't afford to deal with this stuff. So when we look at, at what's happening, we're seeing a shift. And I guess, Bob, you know, I, I would say to you, you know, I know what Bob does for a living. So we'll talk about it in the next segment. We're going to take a break in a second. But I would say, you know, you've got a place for these people to go. And, and it's sort of a refuge that, that will take care of them uh, instead of taking that chance. Like I said, a big box single tenant building from personal experience works very, very well when it's working. But when it goes dark, and especially going into a time like we're in, if you're busy, imagine you own a business. Are you on the building that's had a business in place that's been there forever, and now all of a sudden the economy turns, that business goes dark, or maybe they're purchased by some other company that ends up flushing the thing, and now you're in a situation where you've got to, got to lease up. Uh, you're trying to release the building in, a, in an economy that's not possible, and, and maybe you know, the banks, everything's shifting where you can't sell the thing either, and it really gets ugly quickly, and, and I'm saying this from personal experience. Uh, it's just that's why people like doors. That's why people like the apartments, the diversified income, and all. But the rent control component's crushing that on the West Coast, obviously, yeah. and and so we are seeing that flight to the red states where you've got some right of ownership. I mean, you do own the real estate. And I saw a post yesterday on something that said, "Look, I, I paid tax on the money when I made the money. I paid tax on you know everything I bought with the money. If I'm paying sales tax on stuff." If I own the thing, and it's in, in a lot of these states, I've got to take, take and pay personal property tax during the time I own it, and then I'm going to pay tax again when I sell it, and then when I die, I get to pay tax yet again. I mean, it's a little bit crazy out there. So, you know, it's, it's just, we're, no, I, we're in an interesting time, and, and it's really, it's about 
preservation and and the darling in the space that you work in primarily right now is what mini storage a uh, self storage self storage yeah. but let's let's cut it off right now we're over our time we don't want to drag it out and then we'll hit self storage in, in a cut please don't leave come back david moore and i've got uh, robert smith peregrine private capital don't go away we'll be right back talk about doors thank you thank you